Scotland 29, Argentina 6, folks. Second test match, and Scotland have evened the series up in pretty emphatic fashion. If Gregor Townsend was looking for a response from his team, I think it's safe to say he got it. And, um, yeah, it sets up a really enthralling third test for next week. We're going to go through some key stats and events, and uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts. Look like a pretty warm day, to be honest, kind of late afternoon. We bit of wind early as well, which was um, seemingly being a bit disruptive. It did start well for the Scots. Uh, big scrum penalty, which is an area they didn't really, I felt, like didn't really turn the screws well enough last week. But it started well in that regard. They end up getting advantage and then um, three points to nil. And interestingly, when it's three points to nil after that scrum penalty and that attacking play, I wrote this note. Is it going to be different to last week? Because it had that vibe very early on. That being said, I mean, there's a neck roll from the uh, the Scots pretty much from the restart. And the restarts were a, a big area of concern for the Scots that they did struggle with those. That's one for practicing on the training ground between this game and the next one, I would say. And uh, yeah, basically a free three points for um, the Argentinians return. So it's all evened up. Scotland had some good pressure from the restart themselves, but then... Some wayward stuff from the Scots. Honestly, like the line out was really struggling. Uh, Cherry's throw wasn't straight. Some wayward passing. Kinghorn kicked it out on the full. Yeah, that's when I was starting to look back at my first note. Like, is it going to be different from last week? And I was thinking, no, no, it's going to be exactly the same. But uh, I was clearly wrong about that. Argentina, to be fair, was struggling a wee bit under the high ball as well. Maybe that's partly the wind. But uh, yeah, a little bit messy, I would say, from both sides. However, Carreras at 10, remember he's an outside back at his club and uh, only really stepping in for Sanchez, although he did play a lot of 10 last year, was genuinely looking pretty dangerous at 10, like with his running game anyway. Um, he may still kind of be adding to his game in terms of you know running the show, but there's no doubt in that guy's ability to take the ball to the line. Uh, he burned Xander Fagerson for pace at one point and... Um, Came very close to setting up a try, but they couldn't. Um, they couldn't quite get into some space to uh, to finish it off. Scotland, on the other hand, went 13 phases before just that one wayward pass would spoil it. I mean, the Argentinian defensive line was kind of shooting up pretty well to to be disruptive. So you got to give them some credit for putting the Scottish passes under pressure as well. And then um, Petty getting lineout steals. The, the Scottish lineout early must have been. One from three or two from four or some pretty shocking number. It was, um, it was really, really messy. The ones they were winning were not clean either. It was pretty pretty poor ball. So, um, yeah, a little bit troubling. It wasn't the greatest spectacle in terms of either team being able to recycle the ball, go through some phases and finish anything off. Like, there was nothing happening in that regard. Uh, but the went close, three Argentinian tacklers. Uh, pushed him into touch. I think he got more touches of the ball in this game easily than last week. I don't think he hardly had anything to do last week. Um, Argentina had a decent attack of their own. But um, yeah, their um, their attack still looked a little bit rusty, eh? Just wasn't quite, wasn't quite clicking. Uh, high tackle from the Scots on 33 means the Argentinians did take the lead. Six points to three. Clearly that's the only time they would go in front. Um... But then pretty much in reply, when the Argentinians were offside, the Scots make this bold call to go for touch in a game that felt like it's going to be one where both sides just go for penalties all day long. So credit to the Scots for backing themselves. They went for a ball, which went close. The defense did hold though, but then the, um, the Argentinian guys were offside and they were often offside on their own goal line. They just needed to get their hands behind the line. Eh? It was pretty frustrating. And then Watson kind of uh, burrowed over his impact compared to being absent last week, I think was certainly felt. So um, yeah, they missed the conversion, but it's eight points to six. I was really surprised given how bad the Scottish attack had been at lineout time uh, that the Argentinians didn't contest the lineout. They purely set for the mall because like I said, the, the pressure was on Cherry and you let him have a free one. I feel like that, that settles in his head, you know what I mean? But if you steal another one, you kind of compound that pressure in his mind. So, um, yeah, I was just a wee bit surprised. Hutchinson had to go off. Hutchinson had to go off before half time. Scotland continued to struggle from the restarts, but I mean, we go into half time with that 8 6 scoreline. So, still pretty close. 
like very much game on. Scotland, though, have had 60% possession. They've had uh, like 60% or 56% territory. Uh, but the Argentinians have had just as many run meters. So, yeah, um, still game on, I'm thinking, going into that second half. But the momentum continues with the Scots, and they're able to just not score quick-fire tries, but certainly consistently when they would go down Argentina's end, they would come away with... Um, with points, the uh, the Bennett try was on the back of some big carries from guys like Schoolman and Dodge, like guys really getting some good go forward ball. And uh, you got to give credit to Ben White for the quick service as well. Like he's setting up the platform for these forwards to uh, to hit the ball at pace. So um, yeah, good work from the Scots. They extend their lead, fifteen points to six. Uh, it did look like the Argentinians had replied on like forty seven with some maybe the best attacking play of the game. For them, with uh, some really good go for ball um, from their own half, really. Kick, and then they managed to get the ball back. Some big carries. Guys like Isa, who'd come on for Bruni. Um, uh, Imhoff was involved, but he had a forward pass, which they went back and checked. I mean, Petty was the one I think had finished it off, but uh, it goes back for a forward pass. It's a correct call, and that's maybe the uh not the final straw but like that's the the moment argentina needed to get back into the game that doesn't go their way so correctly though like i said um unfortunately for kyle Rowe, he has to go off he's replaced hutchinson but he does his ankle as the um role that i guess as the argentinians are scoring that that try which ends up not getting the water so thompson comes on i'm kind of pleased that thompson actually came on because he sat for 80 minutes last week which i don't think does anyone any good I know um, Kinghorn needs more time at 10 as well, but I don't think Thompson's touring just to warm the bench for 80 minutes every game. Uh, Scotland go through some phases. They get about three advantages in a row, and the refs had enough. Buffelli ends up being the man to cop the yellow card for Argentina and can. Scotland punish like they couldn't last week. Yes, they can. Matt Fagerson, who I thought defensively had a pretty good shift last week, uh, he's able to drive over after White himself had gone pretty close. So 22-6 at 7 points during the yellow card. It's starting to look pretty much like this game. You know, the Argentinians aren't coming back into this one. Um, Ali Price comes on, uh, immediately gets pinged for not using the ball when the ref had called use it. So uh, not your best introduction, but Argentina get free kick the resulting scrum. Anyway, um, 57. Another one of those moments where like Argentina, maybe if they score, maybe they can put some doubt into the mind. Carreras, the man like I mentioned, he is genuinely dangerous. He's genuinely able to get a meter away from the line. But as he's going over the line and the event, uh, the ref's calling advantage over because the Argentinians did have advantage on the attack. Um, Daj just gets a hand over Carreras' arm to knock the ball free. Like it's literally the like textbook definition of a try-saving tackle. Yeah, without that, it's a, it's a try for Carreras. So... Just that desperation from the Scottish guys, eh? Maybe just a step up from last weekend. The Argentinians, just, it's one of those days where things just don't go your way. A couple of disallowed tries. Um, Scotland do win a scrum penalty on the L mark uh, in their own 22. Big from Xander Ferguson, so that kind of gets them out of dodge. So um, just multiple things going right for the Scots, eh? Which is, as I said, what we didn't see last week. And it gets better when Johnson's able to go over on 64 minutes. Again, not opting for the threes. And uh, it's 29-6. The game is, is pretty much well and truly done and dusted by that point. I mean, Bertrino does get held up before full time. Uh, Crevy looks to have gone over from close range as well. Uh, but the TMO rules, they can't see a grounding. And it was an on-field no-try, so that's fair enough. Um, Buffelli looks to have gone over, but the ref says there's a knock-on. So on another day, Argentina genuinely could have had several tries in this game. But none of them panned out. So sometimes that's just the way it goes. Um, Dodge winning a turnover to finish the game is, is kind of fitting because that guy I thought was uh, was pretty immense. So yeah, it's a strange one. 29 points to 6. I don't think either side was perfect. But certainly uh, we saw a big step up from the Scottish guys. Uh, a few things went right for the Argentinian guys. Like seriously, it's just one of those days where things don't go right. As I said, it's... it's um, it's one where they did create chances, but just, as I said, couldn't convert. Run meters finished 360 to 260 in Argentina's favor. But man, turnovers conceded as 16 to 8. 
So some of that goes down to the Argentinian guys dropping the ball. And some of it goes down to the Scottish, um, you know, relentless work on defence. So, I mean, Darge at least had a couple. Watson at least had one turnover. Um, there was 11 knock-ons from the Argentinian guys. So of that 16, 11 are knock-ons. That's that's brutal. Um, the line-out 8 from 9 is pretty efficient for the Argentinians. 11 from 15 for the Scots. There's a slight area of concern, although that was mostly at the start of the game. Penalty count's pretty close, 11 to 9. The Argentinians copping two more, so nothing really um, doing in that. Individuals, Daj, three defenders beaten, 23 meters, 12 from 13 tackles. Not a bad shift from the young man. White with the quick ball service and the wings. Um, Darcy Graham and Duan Van have actually got some ball this week to get some go forward, which was pleasing. Carreras, like I mentioned, four defenders beaten and a couple of clean breaks. Like Argentina have three clean breaks this whole game. Carreras has two, so he is genuinely a threat, but still couldn't score that try. Kramer, 17 from 19 tackles. But yeah, good game. Good game from the Scots, and as I said, evens up the series. I'm a little bit annoyed at the commentary team because they spoiled the one result that I don't know. The commentary teams genuinely drop a spoiler at some point during the first half. I was ready for it. I showed lightning reflexes like a, a, a much younger man than I should be able to, but I was able to mute the commentary feed to avoid the um, the spoiler, which was pleasing. And then right before full time, like in the 70-something minute, the commentator dropped a second spoiler for the previous games. So um, yeah, I'm going to go now watch that game that I missed because it was on in the middle of the night here in New Zealand, which I now know the result to. So thank you for that commentary team. Uh, I wish you would kind of at least give me a warning before you drop spoilers, but ultimately, I take full responsibility that I didn't get up at 3 o'clock to watch the game. That's the guaranteed way to avoid spoilers, is to watch games live. I accept this fact. But anyway, annoying when you stay off all kinds of social media to, um, to avoid the spoilers, and then you still get spoiled watching the game. Anyway, 29 points to 6. Good result, Scotland. I'll stop being bitter about the spoiler, and um, go watch it. Hopefully, I'll still enjoy it even if it's not a tense one at the end for me. Anyway, you guys have any thoughts? I'll talk to you again soon. Ta-da.